Thanks so much. Got it. All right. So we will get this meeting started. Um, everybody, welcome to the October 24th Watershed Planning Commission meeting. I will call this meeting to order. Uh, and our first item on the agenda is to approve the agenda and meeting minutes. Before we do that, though, I will check in. Are there any changes to the agenda or modifications to the meeting minutes as they are included in the packet? And not hearing any, I will ask if there are no changes to the agenda or meeting minutes, do we have a motion to approve the agenda and meeting minutes as presented? This is Commissioner Caselius. I'll um, make a motion to pass the um, agenda and notes as presented. Hopefully I said that correctly. <laughs> That'll work. Um, That'll and work. do we have a second? Um, do we have a second? Commissioner Bailey, and I'll second that. Thank you. Okay, I'll do roll. Commissioner Weaver. Aye. Commissioner Pint. Aye. Commissioner Casilius. Aye. Commissioner Schmidt. Aye. Commissioner Veerling. Aye. And Commissioner Phil said he'll be joining us a little late, so he's not here yet. Okay, uh, the motion has passed. We can move on to staff reports. And Troy, you're up first. Oh, Madam Chair, can everybody hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Oh, great, thank you. So, Madam Chair, commissioners, good afternoon. Uh, just reading some highlights from the report included in your packet for uh, this month. So top uh, chart, chart there is the technical assistance and cost share requests. We're hovering right around the same number as last time, about 190 so. And uh, of those 190, about 110 to 15 are active projects at various stages of implementation from planning to construction and payment. Um, if uh, you ever wanna see a list of all the uh, projects that are in the works, we certainly can provide that. Otherwise it's just summarized here in the chart. Soil health and cover crop initiative. So we did organize the uh, aerial seeding program for the year. We had 287 acres uh, with three different landowners. Two of those were in Prior Lake Spring Lake. One was in the WMO. Um, so we, we've that's down significantly from previous years. Um, but I don't want to let it go as, as sending a signal that we're seeing less interest in the cover crop program because quite the opposite, we are actually seeing more cover crops. Um, it's just not the aerial uh, seeding component of it. Uh, there's different, um, I guess, philosophy or thoughts about the effectiveness of aerial seeding, especially in a drier year um the germination of uh, the seed is not going to be as great as if it were drilled. Uh, so that's probably one of the bigger pieces of it is just the the uh, survival and and um, germination of the seed is higher when it's drilled in versus aerial seeding, especially when you have drier weather. The other is cost. Um, the cost of aerial seeding isn't as competitive as it once was, so it's actually uh, more cost effective to actually drill it in. Um, so there's a number of factors that play into that number. But uh, again, we, we are seeing an overall increase in cover crop acreage in the county. Um, moving down, clean water education program. So we hosted the outdoor education day. A number of you uh, on the call here were in attendance and thank you to Vanessa and Ryan. And I don't know if Melissa's on or not, but they all uh, did participate and helped out with, um, with uh, being a contributor to the event. So we appreciate that greatly. We had over 12,000 or 1,248 students across 16 different schools. So it was a very good year. Um, let's see, we collected footage of that cover crop aerial seeding. So you'll see that out on our blog and we'll distribute that and, and whoever gets it can share with others as they please. Um, but at least you'll get to see what it did look like when they were actually doing the seeding this fall. Um, we have select our conservation leader. I don't recall if I mentioned this last month. The, um, the, uh, 
22 conservation leader selected was Casey Akers, and that's operated by Rob Casey, our board chair as well. So um, we're just going to do a lot of feature articles on what, what they're doing there in, in recognition. Um, we did start to work with the consultant that was hired to look at our K um, five through eight programming. Uh, that includes outdoor ed day as well as a conservation of classroom. Uh, this is a project funded by one of your grants. It's the 2020 WBIF grant. And we're basically looking at the overall program. Uh, we wanna make sure that we're teaching to the state standards and that the methods and, and um, tools and resources we use to deliver our education to youth uh, is as effective as it possibly can be. And so we did hire the outside consultant to help us with that. So we're working with them and hope to have something ready and prepared within six months to a year. Um, moving down the list, um, buffer law, we're continuing to our inspection on the northern part of Scott County, this area two, uh, native tree seed and plant sale. So we're placing our orders for this year. We're looking at 45,000 trees. Um, and just so everybody knows, it's getting harder and harder to, to find trees nowadays. And I don't know if it's just supply issues or demand or a combination, but um, we're ha having a heck of a time to secure trees. So we're actually having to spread our um, tentacles out further to try to make sure we get all the trees that we, we're hoping to get. So our, our most, um, our, the most trees that we get are from vendors, um, they include Schumacher's, which is in Minnesota, and then uh, the DNR, uh, Iowa DNR is our other main nursery. Um, but we did last year have to go to a nursery over in, um, Michigan, across the uh, across Lake Michigan, and they actually have a very good variety and, and decent prices. So we might be going to them again this year as well. But they they also sell uh, native stock, so we don't have to worry about about that being an issue. Uh, water quality uh, in the WMO, we continue to collect our biweekly water quality sampling at Brewery Creek. Uh, we are continuing our work on Markley Lake to monitor lake levels and quality. Uh, we did the Scott County Highway Department, uh, Pika Creek, uh, macrovertebrate day collection out there. I think Ryan, you were out there doing some work as well, if I'm not mistaken. So I think they did that at the same time together. Uh, groundwater observation wells. So we completed another round of measurements uh, for the July through September quarter. Precipitation chart, we keep track of the uh, average precipitation as well as the actual precipitation for the current uh, month in that chart here at the Jordan Field Office. And you can see September, which is not surprising, we barely had any precipitation. So it nowhere near uh, reaching what is average, which is about three inches in September. Construction site erosion control, you see the bar chart on the far, the bar on the far right shows inspections, just above 200 total inspections for that month and about 20 plan reviews as represented by the purple line. So activity on construction sites uh, continues at a pretty normal pace. I'll skip through Wetland Conservation Act. Uh, that program continues to be busy this time of year. Everybody trying to get in their applications for wetland approvals. Um, terrestrial invasive species, this is working with the townships on um, and the county in partnership with the county on controlling invasive and noxious weeds and the road right of ways. Uh, we finished up our uh, mapping uh, that we did in uh, five, six townships. Uh, so we did the mapping, we put the maps together and putting in uh, putting together recommendations for next year and we're meeting with individual townships at their uh, monthly meetings. Equipment rental program, you see we hit uh, over 2,000 acres and we're heading probably for as many acres as uh, this month, this year as we did last year, if not more. So in other words, another record year. The drills are constantly going uh, and then they probably will through, through November. So we like to see that. That just means there's more conservation cover, more cover crops and all that going in. So it's a good uh, indicator of what's happening out there. 
the cost share grant status. So the bar chart shows uh, in dark is the uh, amount of funds that were encumbered through the various grants that the WMO and Soil and Water have available to landowners within the WMO. Um, the extent, the far right extent of the light green is the total grant amount. And that's summarized in the table below. So of the current grants that are still open, we have about 1.026 million uh, in awards and a uh, little less than half of that is still available for encumbering. Then finally, I'll wrap up my report just by indicating the action uh, that our board took here. Uh, because I had to prepare the report and submit it prior to the board actually taking action this past month, um, was that last week actually, um, I put the word pending on there and underlined it, but these are now final. They did take action, and the actions that you see there are, in fact, the ones that the board did take. So at Faith Point Church and Tom Kloss, both were conservation cover. Uh, one was a final payment, one was a partial for a total of $35.24. And then we had four new applications uh, totaling $44,152, and the board did approve those as well. So with that, Madam Chair, I'll stand by for any questions. Thanks so much. Oh, oh. Go ahead. I was just going to ask if there were questions. Yeah. Um, Troy, can you remind me where Mr. Casey <laughs> lives? What does he live? Which in WMO does he live in? He lives over on the Credit River. Oh. Um, at the north end of Credit River, the city of Credit River, formerly Township just off Eagle Creek Boulevard and Murphy Hanrahan Road. Oh, that's a nice area. Okay. Just um, down the road from uh, Clary Lake. Okay. Yep. Right. And then um, with the Children's um, Outdoor Education Days, which is always a great event, which we really enjoy being able to volunteer at, I can't recall. Are there any other county watershed agencies that have staff volunteering at that, or is it just the WMO? So this year was just the WMO. Um, in past years, we've had Prior Lake Spring Link join us as well. Um, we haven't seen Vermilion or Lower Men. Of course, Lower Men doesn't really have staff. Right. And then the Vermilion, they have such a small piece of it. Um, you know, I, and I don't know if we have a single school from that area join us. They're pretty much New Prague, I think. Um, but no, not they haven't. Not th not to my recollection. Well, the, Melissa, because she does both, I think, kind of covers dual roles at that point. So. There you go. If she, yeah, I, I couldn't say what, <laughs> under what capacity she did, but let's say it's for a million. So then we got two. Normally, Prior Lake does, but they've been really short staffed recently. So their ability to peel away and get out there has been more challenged than it has in the past. So. Yeah, I know they, they usually have, don't I think they usually have about five staff as their kind of standard staffing amount. And if I remember correctly, they're down to what we usually have for staffing, which is like, you know, they're running kind of three to four, if I remember correctly. Right, so. right, yeah. Well, I was just going to mention, jumping way back to talking about the cover crops, um, I really appreciate what you're putting out on social media, too. It was fun to see the video of the aerial, you know, seeding. Oh, great. That, that I don't know if you do that or if you have somebody on your staff do that, but that was really cool to see. And if others are not connected on Facebook to the Scott County WMO, or excuse me, it was the SWCD that posted on their page that they have a, a video of that. It was neat to see, so... Well, I appreciate hearing that, and I can clarify it was not me for sure. Um, <laughs> we have wonderful staff that do that work, so I'll pass that along. Uh, any other questions or comments for Troy? Okay, hearing none, I think we can move on to WMO updates. Vanessa. Thank you, Madam Chair, Commissioners. Uh, yes, so yeah, it's usually I think Shelby that does a lot of it. Is that correct? Correct. Troy, yep. sometimes Kristen does some, yeah. So, Shelby, uh, Kristen does some, and then once in a while, Diane will as well. Oh yeah, that's right, Diane doesn't do so. Yeah, and, and we really value that because obviously a, a, a reasonable portion of our WMO budget goes towards um, paying for them to do that kind of promotional work because it 
benefits the whole WMO area. Um, and especially when you have one uh, talented person doing that for the whole area. So we appreciate it too. I think they do a bang up job. They do a brilliant job. So um, I only have a couple of, of short updates. Uh, Troy already kind of covered one. I was going to say uh, at the end of last month, uh, staff did uh, all volunteer at Outdoor Ed Days. Again, we it was a great event. Very tired by the end of it <laughs> because it was so uh, engaging with the students. Um, I know I worked the pond station this year, uh, which is a new station for me. Uh, so the children actually get to uh, look at macroinvertebrates that are in that pond water and help kind of try to identify them and separate them and um, group them in ways that they kind of make sense. So that's a really fun, engaging one for me. And they seem to really like that one a lot. Um, it always goes really fast, but it's a really great event. Um, each of us were there this year again. And then actually as well on that same week, we all also volunteered at the Children's Water Festival. So the Children's Water Festival is a Metro Children's uh, Education event, and it's primarily supported by all the um, metro counties. So each of the metro counties actually contributes towards kind of steering that event. Um, and use, we usually have, you know, you could be up to like 3,000 students a year. This year was a slower year because of coming back from COVID, so we started a soft year. So this year was just under a thousand students, um, but there's over 45 stations, there's Met Council stations, there's uh, Board of Water and Soil Resources stations, DNR, uh, across the board, different stations. So um, that's a really engaging event too. And we did have uh, schools from Stack County attending that one as well. So we had a really fun, engaging um, week of just education and, and just getting the next generation um, connecting to our water resources and kind of learning more about water, which really helps kind of build them up. So that was a lot of fun. Uh, the second thing is, as you noticed, uh, we did go back to virtual since the last couple hybrid meetings weren't really high in attendance. Um, it was just staff at, the, at that case. Uh, we decided to switch back to doing uh, virtual meetings uh, for the most part. However, we still acknowledge that there's a great um, a great amount of work that gets done just by being together. So we're going to alternate it with a couple times a year we'll do an in-person meeting. Right now staff is thinking like a spring meeting and a fall meeting. So we'll do mostly virtual meetings, but then one spring and then one fall meeting will be an in-person meeting. And that will be our kind of new hybrid path moving forward. And we think that really can kind of maximize the ability for us all to get together and engage together while also being really cognizant of the fact that you're all volunteering your time and things come up and we want you to be able to attend um, in the most convenient way possible. So that's going to be our new path moving forward. Uh, those are kind of the two uh, main updates that I have at the moment. So let's stand for any questions. Thanks, Vanessa. Do we think we'll go back to a tour next year? Try. <laughs> I think we, yeah, I think we're pretty much looking for, if I remember correctly, we are going to do a tour next year, correct? Poor Troy is like back on the spot. Wait. Um, well, I think. You know, I don't know if Troy's getting his microphone in order, but I think that uh, the Soil and Water has has to do a tour uh, as part of their um, one of their grants. So it was either this year or next year, and it, it didn't happen this year, so um, it'll be next year. So yes, there will be a tour next year. Can you hear okay. me? Yes. Yep, no, hear you. Oh yeah, right, right hit on the head. So um, I think the budget that we have for next year does provide room for a. A tour again so we do look forward to that okay i was just thinking that would obviously have to be in person so <laughs> if nothing else that'll get us all together for that uh, for those that can attend absolutely other questions for vanessa or comments okay Hearing none, I think we can move on to our ongoing business, uh, starting with Ryan and project updates. And Chair, Commissioners, uh, good afternoon. 
So like Vanessa, I don't have um, a ton of updates. Uh, so one of the updates that I've kind of been bringing to the meetings is we've got two CIPs that uh, are in the works. And so um, at the last meeting, I, I talked about, you know, we're waiting for the contract. Um, we are fortunate enough now that both contracts have been executed. So last week I met with SRF um, at the Pika Creek Ravine site. So I had not yet met uh, Leah is their project manager. And then she also had a gentleman from the company named Alex out there. So I hadn't met um, either one in person yet. So it was nice to go out there and, and basically what we were doing is just um, just checking the, the ravine out. You know, they've never put eyes on it yet. And so there's a few things that they wanted to check. You know, there's some utilities in the area. There's a couple existing um, conservation BMPs that are in that ravine already. Uh, they wanted to, to look at those and then kind of get an extent of where the surveying would go, you know, so there's some fingers um, that come off the main channel of the ravine. And then seeing if they wanted to, you know, go up those and, and survey um, that as well. So, and there's been a lot of work that's been done um, on Pika Creek itself. So this is actually a tributary stream of uh, Pika Creek. Um, but the landowner, one of the landowners, um, Jay Pika, uh, was nice enough to meet us out there and his son, Danny, came with as well. Uh, so it was nice to kind of um, have Jay meet uh, the folks at SRF as well. Um, likely Jay Pika is the furthest downstream landowner. And so that's um, more than likely going to be the staging area and access. So he's going to have the most disturbance going on on his property. Uh, so it's nice to kind of um, connect them and, and um, introduce them and, and uh, get off on the right foot with them. So um, we were able to do that. And then I talked to Interfluve about our um, Xanadu Avenue site. Um, so this is another stream bank stabilization uh, that Interfluve is going to design for us. And we are looking at next week's surveying. So um, they thought that that would work for them. Uh, leaves have pretty much come off. Um, by and large, obviously some are still hanging on, but for their survey purposes, I think we should be in good shape. So I'll meet them out there, um, help them out um, whenever they uh, whenever they get that on the schedule. So uh, those are kind of the two big ones. Uh, so it's nice to get them moving along, uh, and I'll keep the you know the commissioners here informed as we go through the design process and the permitting and, and all that good stuff that's uh, yet to come. So. Uh, but now we're at least moving. The wheels are moving on. Uh, next item, if you remember at the last meeting, I talked about our current EPA grant and a work order that we're working on. So we're still kind of in the process of putting together that paperwork. Um, MPCA staff's been great to work with. Um, there's not a huge rush on it. Uh, we still have funds available in all the different areas um, of that. But basically what we're doing is expanding the Cedar Lake watershed area that was identified in the plan and expanding it to Middle Sand Creek. So it still includes Cedar Lake watershed. So any projects that do still come out of that watershed will still be eligible. Um, we'd be happy to work with any of those landowners. But um, we're expanding it just to um, kind of get some of the funds moving. We haven't, um, haven't moved as much in that watershed um, as maybe some of the others. And so we're just kind of expanding it a bit. Um, there is one project we're still kind of looking at as well, so hopefully, hopefully that one continues to progress forward. Um, our erosion and sediment control program, so if you've noticed, there's an uh, item on our agenda for today's meeting. There was one at the last meeting. So that program over the last couple of months has really been um, peeled back, I guess, so to speak. We're, we're kind of diving into it more and more and, and trying to adapt the program. Um, today's, you know, talks about some of the fees and I'll get into that when we get into the, that agenda item, but um, just know that we are constantly with any of our programs, we're trying to adapt and improve, uh, but that program in particular staff has been working on pretty extensively over the last couple months here trying to, um, you know, figure out where there's areas that we can, we can do better with the program itself, so. Um, and then the other item we were kind of talking about before the meeting started. So in November, you'll be seeing our, um, our tax docket, so our, our cost share uh, docket that we look at every year. 
Um, that will be on the agenda for the November meeting. So we'd be looking to get a recommendation from the WPC at that point, and then um, and then we take it to the uh, WMO board uh, for the December meeting. So uh, that was kind of all I had for update. So I will stand for any questions if anyone has any. Thank you, Ryan. Any question, questions for Ryan? Okay, hearing none, I think we can move on. Um, next topic is One Watershed, One Plan updates. Um, I don't have an update. They actually canceled the October meeting because they weren't ready to move forward on um, anything. So that's, we have nothing new there other than what Vanessa is going to um, present in our next new business topic. Um, so I don't have anything to add. Virgil, did you have anything you wanted to um, talk about no, for the ongoing I, part? No, I think it's, it sounds like going forward, we might have a little more to report, but for right now, it is pretty slim. So, Okay. Okay. So I think then we'll just move on to uh, Vanessa's update and what Melissa had pulled together. Um, and then if there are other questions too, we can cover them after that. So I'll just move forward to uh, Vanessa. Thank you, Madam Chair, Commissioner. Um, I know Melissa is actually on vacation today. I will give you a couple of her quick updates uh, right before I jump into this. Um, a couple of things, as Brian mentioned, uh, we're working on doing an amendment to the EPA uh, Nine Elements Plan grant. And one of the things Melissa was doing with that one was reaching out uh, to our lovely partners at the Cedar Lake Improvement District because they had done a CARP study this summer to see if there had anything that had shaken out of that CARP study that we might, might be able to incorporate into this grant. And it does look like um, there is a potential plan to uh, address some CARP mitigation um, because it does look like the carp are um, reproducing in the lake at the moment. And so um, there are a couple of items in that proposed plan that could be qualifiers for uh, the nine elements plan grant. And um, of those items, apologize for one second, that's my cat. Sorry about that. She's a very old cat. <laughs> um, of that, uh, there are two of the items that do uh, potentially qualify for our grant. And so we we're hoping that um, if they would be willing, if the Cedar Lake Improvement District would be willing to do the other two, altogether we might be able to complete that. So that is one of the activities uh, Melissa is working on. Um, she's also working a little bit more on uh, coordinating the one watershed, one plan elements, because a lot of it is very staff intensive. Uh, and it's something that is actually taking a little bit more staff time uh, for us to do. And then um, with all the great meetings, with all of the advisory team meetings and steering committee meetings that are really kicking off right now. So she's really helping out a little bit more with that uh, and also kind of helping to work with Ryan on looking at some more uh, neighborhood rain garden opportunities in like the Cedar Lake sub watershed and things like that to kind of help move some of those funds. Um, and all of that is because uh, as of now, uh, the McMahon outlet project is tabled. Uh, we don't have a current owner for the outlet. And until we have somebody willing to own the outlet, uh, that project is tabled from the county's perspective. Now, we are wrapping up the design and maintenance contract because we already had been moving forward with that. Uh, and that was a contract with WSB. We still feel that's actually a very relevant um, piece of information to have because that will give us a little bit more information on a lot of the what ifs I think folks were having. And it would also be useful for some of the other agencies that might be interested in putting in an outlet at some other lakes in the county um, and some other flooded areas. So um, that being, and it was mostly finished. So with that being said, we were going to wrap that part up. So Melissa is working on wrapping that up with uh, Megan Tasca. So we will have a shelf ready outlet design uh, should 
somebody be interested in doing that. Uh, now that grant doesn't have to be executed until December of 2024. So, you know, there is still time for somebody to uh, step forward, but it won't be the county at this point. So, uh, and so that means some of Melissa's time is now freed up because that was a very, very uh, staff intensive project. So um, we're shifting her to a lot of projects that have been serious, just uh, waiting uh, because we obviously have a lot more work to get done than we have the staff to do it. So um, she's very busy now. <laughs> so those are Melissa's updates and I'm going to just roll that into then. Uh, this is kind of a precursor to our next uh, activity in November. So as you recall, we had uh, last month kind of brought to you our uh, priority issues for one watershed, one plan. Uh, the other piece of that is priority locations and water bodies. So we bring these pieces back to the steering committee and the planning committees to assess as for the larger group, um, what is the whole group going to incorporate into that plan? And we wanna be able to bring our pieces forward with what we feel are our priorities. So as you recall, uh, last month we brought you the uh, priority issues that we felt were important for One Watershed, One Plan. And this month, we're going to actually kind of just, I'm giving you a little bit of a precursor as to what we'll be doing next month, which are our priority water bodies. So what Melissa's actually done here is kind of given you a little bit of background uh, in reference to our watershed management plan, um, how we got to the priority water bodies that we have in our plan. Because it's not arbitrary and it's not just a popularity vote, um, which likes people like more. Um, it, it actually is scientifically driven and data driven. And she kind of gives you a really quick background as to the key pieces from our plan that leads to those priority water bodies. So if you, um, the first, uh, again, the first table is, again, what are those water resource outcomes that we're looking for in our plan? And then table 3.2, because these are all factors that help us rank those water bodies. Uh, table 3.2, those are the water quality uh, pollutant factors. And then table 3.3, these again are all from our watershed management plan, are the water body attributes. So when you take all of those tables into consideration, um, what you end up with is we are assessing each of the lakes within the WMO, as well as the streams and those stream subsheds uh, for health, uh, basically comes to human health and safety. Those are the top priorities of this WMO as our residents and partners have determined. Um, and then after that, it's kind of protection and prevention are higher priority than restoration because obviously protection and prevention are far more cost effective. It's much cheaper to protect than it is to fix. And then trying to improve some of those underlying factors like soil health because um, that actually will actually lead to better water quality. And then we would prefer in our WMO and based on our plan to use available information to get started on implementation um, rather than um, just waiting to have a study completed. Um, we're comfortable if we have the data available to just start moving. Um, we wanna be an on the ground project driven agency, uh, not just one that creates studies. So that's kind of a quick summary of how we get to the priority list of lakes. So um, Melissa did pull out the priority lakes within the WMO's plan, as you see on the last, there we are. <laughs> I usually see on the last page there. So uh, the priority lakes in the WMO are currently Cedar, McMahon, O'Dowd, Thole, and Cleary. Now it doesn't mean we're not addressing any of the other water bodies in the WMO, but these are the ones that get priority. These are the ones that will temp typically get funding um, for grants and things over others uh, because we have them as a priority. And then in addition to that, we have Sand Creek and the Sand Creek watershed, including the major tributaries, which is a significant portion of the WMO in the county. So even some of the uh, smaller lakes that might discharge or be hydrologically connected to Sand Creek can, can actually qualify through its connection to Sand Creek. And then the Blakely area ravines, and Credit River. 
So uh, those are the ones that we currently have in the plan. And we wanted to bring those to you today and to kind of give you a background as to what our current priority lakes are and streams are and how we got there so that next month when we do our next activity uh, led by commissioners Weaver and Pint, um, you kind of have a nice little background and you have the information kind of necessary to kind of help make some of those decisions. And then we thought today, if you had any real questions about um, any of our priority lakes or any lakes we don't already have on the priority list or streams, obviously, for the same reason, um, today would be a great question to kind of answer uh, questions about what are about our existing priority lakes and, and rivers. So with that, I stand for any questions. So uh, I'm sorry, I clarify, this is not an action item. This is just a conversation item today. Sorry. Will you please pass on to Melissa that I'm very grateful she put this all together. This is going to be super helpful <laughs> in moving forward with this. Um, and this is exactly what we need to do to be ready to go back to the one watershed, one plan um, folks and just say, you know, as WMO and as the county, this is what we want to prioritize so we can make some decisions there. So um, this, this was so great in getting us um, on the right track to be ready for this discussion. So please thank her for me. Absolutely. And, and furthermore, we can, and uh, you can, sorry, not we, you can, as, as the WPC, um, take from this list and narrow it down even further. You could even rearrange it uh, if you really wanted to. You could say, you know, clearly like this is really, what we feel is should be the focus for one watershed, one plan, because we feel there's lots of grant opportunities out there for a doubt right now kind of thing. Uh, whereas we don't seem to get as many grant opportunities for Cleary. That's just one example. That's not necessarily true, but you yep. know, just, so it's something for you all to think about. Um, and I'll pass that on to you. Yeah, and that's the idea too, is we'll go back with the One Watershed, One Plan, and then we'll have to look at everything in the planning area. So not obviously just Scott WMO, um, and then make decisions as a whole of what we wanna to prioritize too, so. I do have a question, but it's on um, Melissa's other updates. So I don't know if we wanna jump back to that. Um, I. I am sorry, I don't remember that we had to put the McMahon Lake on hold. Is that something we already talked about? And then I don't, and I thought that we had an owner. Did something fall through there? Yes, uh, Commissioner Weaver, it's a, it's a great question. Uh, a lot of this has been determined by county, is being determined by county board and county administration working with uh, the McMahon residents. Um, Commissioner Wolf has been very deeply involved in this as well. And it's just, yes, yeah, it's, it's just a, at the moment, it just, there was not, there was not an agreement of who would be willing to own it. Um, the county and the WMO are not uh, outlet owning agencies. We're not water level control agencies. That's not what we are. Um, it, it's not consistent with WMO policies. Uh, to own outlets, because uh, again, we just aren't a water level control agency or watershed yeah. management organization. Uh, so, you know, our intent was always to help, is consistent with our plan to always help coordinate and help design. Um, we'd help get it in the ground. And then our perspective was that we would always be able to turn this over to a long term owner. Uh, and then it turned out there was uh, not a consensus as to what that would look like. Uh, so uh, we have not necessarily as staff been working really deeply in that. Um, that's been a little bit more county administration. So I'm more passing that on Okay. Uh, for you. Okay, okay. Uh, Other questions? There's, there's still time. So I mean, <laughs> somebody could still step forward. Yeah, but if, could an LID own it if one was formed and then would there be time to form one and then still have them use the grant funds? Yes, there is actually a McMahon LID, oh, uh, McMahon okay. lid. Uh, they don't uh, care to own it at this time. Oh, okay. So um, the eligible age, it has to be a government agency at this point, a public entity who can own it. So it can't be a private citizen or individual. It can't be a nonprofit. 
Um, it must be oh. a public entity, which limits it to, you know, obviously there's the county uh, WMO, which that's not what our agencies do, um, a lake yeah. improvement district, uh, township, um, some other type of JPA type agency. It has to be one of those. So uh, if there's not uh, an owner, then, you know, and we'll continue. I mean, we've still, the county still says, you know, if there is willing partners, we're still willing to provide the match at a later date, still willing to do project management. Um, and, you know, we're still working on Markley Lake, the flood mitigation study and efforts on that. And that's a joint partnership with uh, Credit River and City of Prior Lake. Um, in that case, we're each kind of taking a third. Uh, but again, we're not going to be the long-term owners of whatever the result of that is. Um, the partners are comfortable with that. Um, so that one's still kind of moving along. Uh, Credit River also did an outlet on Keynes Lake. Um, we just provided some support on that. So it depends per water body, I guess is probably the yeah. best way to say. Um, Nobody is required, as you know, to own <laughs> outlets there's no outlet owner agency in the state of minnesota so it's kind of somebody has to want to yeah it would just be a bummer to lose, lose the grant fund so i don't remember which commissioner doesn't one of our commissioners live on that lake yes commissioner shea does okay and it looks like he's not on today no nope, i just I, oh is he on I don't think he was able to make it today. Dami did receive a, a unable to attend today from him. Okay. I guess I, I, I'm just thinking it would be important to let him know so he can let the others around the lake. I mean, if they're having these discussions so that they all know this and can do whatever they do, whatever they might want to do, if that's talk to their representatives on the SWCD or the county. Commissioner, I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know what their next step would be, but I, it would be a, a bummer it's for them to not be informed. Yeah. This is Tom Wolf. Yeah, they, they already know all about okay. this deal. And uh, I, I don't know. I, I, I think both sides, sides work pretty hard on, you know, coming to some sort of agreement. But um, yeah, I don't, I, I, and I think that the fallback, if, if this lid would have taken it, the fallback would have been the county. Um, and so, you know, some of us are the thinking that they should have maybe just taken that. I think there was a lot of overthinking on this oh. deal. And so I, that's just my opinion. I, I don't know, but everybody works so hard and we got all the bonding yeah. money. And I mean, this has been uh, three or four years I've got into this thing. And um, then well, I don't, I'm, that's all I'm going to say. I, I just it, very frustrating that it didn't, uh, didn't make it to the finish line. So. So is there anything else we can do? Like who should we talk to or who, I, I don't know. It just seems kind of a bummer. Like I said, if, if we were to lose the grant funds and not have anything happen and I, I don't know. I, I don't know. The only other people or place that, well, I don't know, you know, there's a little bit of it in Cedar Lake Township, uh, the, the lake um, and in Spring Lake Township. I, that's the only ones I could think of doing it, but I don't think there's any appetite there for that. So that's, I don't know. Because I know, Vanessa, you're saying it, somebody else might step up, but I, I don't know. It doesn't sound likely from what I'm hearing, though. Well, so it, it, is, it is tough. I Generally, again, because these are not things that, like the WMO, for example, it's just not within the, the WMO's policies or purview to own. Um, yeah. Counties have a little bit more, a wider net as you can say as to what they may or may not but it, it isn't consistent with the county's policies either and there are many many lakes in the county and so obviously the county's current policy is you know if they become the manager of every lake outlet yeah, yeah. and lake then they be you become the lake level manager and then if every you know every time the water is too high or too low folks are going to be calling you to raise and lower every outlet um yeah. you know a doubt is out there right now uh talking about putting one in themselves as well um, and is that the role of county? Our county has said no, that's not our role. Um, if you probably remember Clark's Lake. Um, many of you are familiar with the Clark's uh, Lake, uh, where we tried to help patch a berm 
in that one. And even now we still get a lot of calls because we're still considered to be yeah. the lake outlet level or the lake water level now manager of that simply because we, so it's, it is a very large undertaking and it's, it has a lot of impacts on every water body, not just this one. Um, so it's, it's a more than just this conversation. Um, and that being said, that doesn't mean a outlet would still never get installed. Um, the, the county and WMO still have the match funds. We always have, we're always willing to bring the match funds forward. Um, this was the other 50% that the residents um, would otherwise have had to come up with themselves. And if they don't want to use a grant to cover it, they still have the ability to assess themselves at a later date if they wanted to do it that way um, or, or something like that. But they kind of have to be willing to, somebody has to be willing to own it. Um, and like Commissioner Wolf said, I mean, he is, I've never seen anybody work so hard um, as Commissioner Wolf has on this. So uh, at least if nothing else, you should know, just put in so much into this one. <laughs> and I'm sorry, just one more sorry. question. I, I hate to drag this out for everybody, but one more question just for clarification. The reason we're running into this is strictly because there's no outlet and now we're wanting to put one in. And is it who is the DNR the one saying you need to have an owner? Um, yes, yeah, somebody has to own it, the water control yep. structure. But if there was a natural outlet that had already been there, I mean, we have those everywhere where no one owns them, right? I mean, Correct. this is just because we want to put in put in some kind of outlet. Okay. okay. Correct. Yeah. The, the residents approached the county um, back in 2017. I'd have to double check. Um, and then much more aggressively in 2019 with high water levels and, and wanting something yep. to be done. And so that's kind of how the ball started rolling. Obviously this isn't a project that's in our, our plans or our yeah. property list. It's something they brought to us. And so obviously being who we are, we always wanna help. Um, so that's kind of how it got started. Uh, but yes, there is no natural outlet for McMahon. Um, so yeah, if there was a natural outlet, you're right. It'd be kind of a loose Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Sorry to drag that out. Anybody have other questions for Vanessa on any of this? No, this is, and this is Commissioner Casilias. I, I, I'm glad that we had a chance to discuss this too, because it's sort of fascinating for me too. But the strange thing is too, when they first started this project, the lake was incredibly high, but now we've had two years of a drought. And so, you know, the need I'm sure in people's minds has been minimized somewhat too, because now it doesn't seem so urgent, but doesn't mean it won't be urgent again at some point. Right, exactly. Um, and as Pam, as you know, like uh, Cedar Lake itself has an outlet, and that one's actually owned mm -hmm. by the DNR. Um, we we pushed pretty hard to try to see if the DNR would be willing to own this one, um, and the response from the DNR was, you know, they have so many water bodies right now that have so many issues that uh, ours doesn't hit their priority list for ownership. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. But you know, there that's about the only other one I could see is if you could get somebody to get the more conversations with the DNR would be my only other thing I can think of right now. Yeah. I don't see them budget on that. Oh, but, oh I wish they would. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay. Um, where are we at? So that was that new business. Um, so I think we can move on to Ryan unless I'll just do one last call for questions for Vanessa. Okay. All right. Uh, Ryan, up with fee schedule adjustments. Thank you, Commissioner. So um, as I was talking about in the updates, um, we have been uh, looking at our natural resources program. Um, so I, I should back up a little bit. So we kind of wear two hats, uh, Vanessa, Melissa, Dami, and myself, and it's um, You've got the WMO, you know, that that does um, a lot. It's it's the more maybe dominant of the programs. But then we also, on the other hand, have our natural resources department, which that department covers um, erosion control program, among others. And so we've been kind of looking at that a little closer lately. Um, we've noticed kind of a, um, a downward trend in revenue and an upward trend in expenditures and so anytime you have that you know we're starting to to lose funds 
um, in this program, and it was becoming um, more and more, you know, it was increasing. So Vanessa and I kind of took the time to um, dive into it and trying to understand what's going on. Now, we don't have everything figured out by any means, but this one piece of it, the erosion and sediment control program, um, we're, we're kind of focusing on that for the time being. And every year uh, we have the ability to, um, every department at the county uh, can change their fees. Um, and so it's called the fee schedule. And it's this time of the year that those fees uh, need to go to the various departments that kind of run with this. Um, and so ours were due two weeks ago. And so this is just an informational piece. Uh, it's not an action item. So what we wanted to do is look at our ESC program and some of the fees that we have. Um, you know, we've got a review fee that we charge uh, for time spent um, reviewing any erosion and sediment control plan. So, you know, an applicant comes to the county for a home or accessory structure. Um, we've got uh, a fee that's associated with our review time to do that. And if you remember at the last meeting, um, we were talking about no escrows and escrows, and we had ultimately decided to uh, eliminate the, um, the no escrow um, review fees for, uh, for our program. And so that's reflected in here as well. Um, the current language is in um, this middle column. And our proposed uh, language, what we had sent in, is in the far right column. Um, so you'll notice, you know, there's nothing anymore for the, you know, if the uh, escrow is waived and here's a review fee um, and so forth. So when looking at uh, the southern metro area, we wanted to compare our fees uh, to other LGUs, you know, cities or counties. And so we looked at a few different um, counties. We looked at Carver County and Dakota County and then Scott County. Um, looking at their fees and and basically what we came up with is we were we were charging um, not not nearly as much as as uh, other entities and so with the program um, you know showing a, a deficit you know it was one way to kind of try to offset some of those costs was to bring our fees up to be more in line with kind of what other entities or LGUs in the area had. And so you'll notice um, we've upped our, our permit fees here to $300 for a principal structure. So that'd be your, um, your homes. And then $200 for accessory structures. So that'd be additions, sheds, pools, um, all of those. Um, our escrows, we, um, we bumped that up as well. So looking at other entities, once again, it was a little low. Uh, we, we kind of are, are hoping that maybe by increasing this a little bit, we're at times running into issues with, um, you know, contractor comes in for the building permit, puts down the escrow, um, and then the homeowner moves in, they get their temporary certificate of occupancy and they don't really finish um, the landscaping piece, you know, getting a vegetative cover. And, and that's really in reality what we're, uh, our goal is out there is to reduce erosion. And, and by doing so, you know, you need a, a, a vegetative cover to do that long-term. So, it's a little bit, it's one, two parts. One, it just was low compared to other uh, LGUs. And, and two, we're hoping that maybe by increasing it a bit, it incentivizes more compliance. Um, you know, maybe the contractor would be a little bit more involved in, in wanting to, um, you know, finish out and, and get the vegetation covered and, and maybe the homeowner too. Um, I venture to guess that a lot of the homeowners are the ones that are ultimately paying uh, those escrows. And so, um, you know, the more that they can get back, the better. Um, and then lastly, um, um, once again, just increase for our grading permit review. So, um, you know, upping it to this $500 and then there is an escrow um, established with that as well. So, 
Um, so once again, this is just an informational item. Um, there's no action that's needed. It's uh, something though that we obviously want to keep the WPC involved with. Um, and know that you know these changes are are headed towards the um, WMO board. Um, we they could certainly change from now till then. Um, these are not necessarily set in stone. Um, that we have not changed our fees uh, for a number of years, and so um, we are kind of learning the process as well. So these are not final. Um, they can change, may change. We'll see. Um, but they do head to the uh, county WMO board in December uh, for final approval. So, and that's with all other departments as well. So, um, so I, I guess with that, I'll kind of stand for any questions if if some of it didn't make sense. Ryan, yeah, this is Virgil. A uh, couple quick questions. One is. I just buy a lot and now I'm going to have to build a building on it, a home. So therefore I'm going to need a residential building permit, which, which you're proposing is going to be $300 for the structure. Okay. Also, I need to do some fill and or moving of, of uh, dirt, obviously. So that means a, a grading permit, I'm assuming, in addition then. Is that correct? Um, Madam Chair, Commissioner Pint, uh, it's a great question. So it, it all depends uh, a little bit. So generally speaking, the land disturbance for your um, home structure is covered by the review fee in the escrow and not an additional grading permit. Okay. We do run into at times, it, let's say you wanted to put a shed up but you aren't ready for the shed itself. You're just ready to put the pad in. There, at times that can happen and that applicant would get charged the grading permit fee to do all the grading work. And then at a later date, they come in for their actual building permit. But that's a rare occasion. Most of the time, it's just one. You, you don't have additional you don't have two, you know, duplicative permits. Okay. okay. So if I'm going to just be building a house, all right, in order to, uh, this new proposal, then it would be, I would pay $300 for my uh, permit, and then I would put $3,000 in escrow, and then I could proceed in most cases. Correct. And your escrow is returned to you uh, at the end of your project, once you've reached a 70% vegetative cover. Sure. Um, and that could be oats, you know, an annual cover. Let's say you're not ready to put in your sod yet. Sure. Um, you know, we're just looking to get vegetation established and, and then we can kind of close it out. Um, most people obviously are putting in their sod or their turf. Sure. Um, okay. But it, it is an option, you know, and, and that's something too we try to pass along. You know, a bag of oats is pretty inexpensive. Um, and, and wouldn't necessarily hurt any of your future seeding. It's not going to compete with your, you know, Kentucky bluegrass or fescue either. Um, sure. But so the the balance of your escrow is returned to you um, based on you know how many inspections you need the soil and water. They're the ones that perform these inspections. How many they do on your property. So um, if you are staying in compliance uh, and there's not a big resource concern, a large portion of that gets returned back to you. Um, if it drags on for a while and, you know, you don't comply um, and the inspections take longer and, and obviously the duration of the permit being open takes longer, then there would be less that gets returned back. Sure. So it's my understanding that, okay, so it's going to take potentially several site visits by your uh, SWC staff um, to comply with all this, make sure they're complying. And if that's the case, I see where you're going up with the you know, increasing the amount, I think you were too low at 130. So obviously I would be very supportive of uh, your proposed new rates going into next year so. Yeah, and, and to clarify too, that the escrow is a security. You know, that is literally just uh, money being held and promise that you will complete required activities um, and the inspections that that requires. And, and part of what MS4s or cities and agencies run into development authorities is that uh, there isn't a lot of incentive to finish doing the work that's necessary. And so sites sit open and they erode and they create a lot of discharge and you have a lot of staff time going out there inspecting and inspecting and inspecting. And worst case scenario, you have to try to force compliance. And so um, 
we're noticing that first of all, the cost of, of the escrows isn't quite sufficient to even cover a lot of the inspections at this point, because a lot of them are dragging out how many inspections they need. And as well as covering costs if we had to go out and kind of force compliance. But that being said, it's a security. So if you do all of the work, you, you get whatever's left back. And, and we're trying to encourage people to do things as quickly as they efficiently can. Um, landscaping and final grading is tough because People move in, they live on the house, the builder's done for the, by and large. And so, you know, there's not a huge push at that point. And yet you have a site that's sitting open. So we're not making money at all. Um, we're not covering program costs at, we never make money, but we don't even cover program costs at all with that escrow. That is simply a security to make sure a job gets done. Um, the building permit fees, um, that covers our staff time to help run the program um, but it is a small part of our revenue overall for the program so um, but since we haven't updated our fees in over 10 years uh, we're really behind <laughs> so the program is just struggling more and more uh, to just keep afloat good Th thank you for the update like i said I, I support very strongly your recommendations go forward with this so Any other questions for Ryan or Vanessa? Okay, well, thanks for all that information, Ryan. Um, I guess then we are at the end of our meeting, so we just need a motion to adjourn. We always run into this. <laughs> I know, everybody wants to stay on. All right, Commissioner Pitt, I, I make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Do we have a second? Second. This is Commissioner Casilius. I second that motion. Never felt so loved. Thanks, guys. All right, I'll do a final <laughs> roll. Commissioner Weaver. Aye. Commissioner Pitt. Aye. Commissioner Casilius. Aye. Commissioner Schmidt. Aye. Commissioner Veerling. Oh, did we lose him? Oh, we did. Sorry. Mark, are you there? I'll circle back to him. Still Commissioner. showing that he's on. Yeah, Commissioner Thill. Oh, no, we lost two. It looks like he's still on. I think it's. All right. Scared. We can do a last call for Commissioner Veerling and Commissioner Thill. Veerling, aye. Okay. Um, Get it? Did I, thank you. Um, <laughs> you. You do have a majority there. Well, I was going to say, I think we have a majority. So I think we're good. All right. Motion is passed. Uh, thanks uh, to staff. And we will see everybody uh, next month. Great. Thank you. See you, everybody. Bye. Bye.